Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's class on using oils for emotional and spiritual support and to help boost and upgrade. Um, tensions and emotions have been very high basically since the beginning of March and have clearly escalated to a point of what feels like crisis. But in my belief system, crisis is always followed by transformation. And typically, in, in, in our human nature, we are not so inclined to change until there is crisis. So in my mind, they are very much inextricably linked. Um, but the truth is, we're experiencing collective trauma. And there's trauma on a lot of different levels. And so the best thing we can do is our own personal work to feel our feelings, process our emotions, and clear out any stuck energy that might be lingering in our system that can be creating physical or emotional or spiritual dis-ease. So the reason why essential oils are such a critical part of this process is that they are natural plant medicine and they work with our body's natural system they're, you know, oils are carbon-based and our body is carbon-based. So our body understands how to utilize this plant medicine to facilitate recovery and healing. Uh, it's not that oils heal, you know, cure us of anything, but they help to facilitate the body's job, which is to heal itself. So we're going to talk about how we can facilitate an upgrade. And you'll learn the science behind emotion and essential oils. And this I think is important because we are such rational creatures and we want the proof. We wanna understand why things work. Um, you know, this can help us just to better understand. So our you know, conscious brain can say yes <laughs> to the subconscious processes that the essential oils do support us with. We'll learn some tools and habits for healthy body chemistry, and then practical steps you can take right now to transform your emotional and spiritual health. So we are really created to function as a whole. And a lot of times when we're experiencing emotional upset, we're prescribed a you know over-the-counter or prescription medication that basically just dims our neurological functioning so we can't feel our feelings quite as much, or it'll boost our serotonin levels so all we feel is good. And this can be important if we're going through a very deep emotional crisis, but they're not designed to be used long-term. We don't have enough studies to show that the long-term use of some of these pharmaceutical drugs are not dangerous. And if you've ever heard a pharmaceutical commercial, usually it'll go through you know, the 400 negative side effects that you might have, including stroke and heart disease and blood clotting and brain aneurysms or whatever else they have to disclose in the commercials. So for me, you know, I've gone through my own personal journey with mental health in my early 20s. I was extremely, um, extremely depressed and had a lot of anxiety. And I did try over-the-counter prescription medications. And, you know, for the short term, I found that they were necessary so I could ground myself enough to start working through the emotional baggage that I was carrying. Um, but after about six months, I found that the medications changed my personality and I didn't like that. And this is not to shame anybody who is taking, um, is taking drugs and that does support and help you. I would, I'm not a doctor and I would not advise stopping those medications. But what I would advise is starting to make connections to the whole body. If, if this is a path you're already on, essential oils can help deepen that connection. Um, because, you know, the body, mind, and spirit are, are, are always working together. And, you know, my biggest complaint about modern medicine is that it divides our body up into parts. Um, and, and that's just really not the way the body functions. All the parts are connected. So if you're focusing on one part, you can't really ignore the other parts. Um, and spirit, body, and mind are always going to be functioning together to create overall wellness. So we need to find ways to nourish all parts of our bodies. Our body is made up of intelligent cells and they're designed to continually restore health. So our cells want to be healthy. They are wired that way. So anything we are doing that's creating disease or making us feel unhealthy is oftentimes blocking 
or disrupting the cell's job. Um, so what we're doing with essential oils is we're clearing out some of the noise that is preventing our cells from doing their job. So emotions and your beliefs. So emotions trigger peptides, which are emotion, um, information carrying molecules. So if you were to feel sad, that, that, that um, sadness would trigger a peptide that would bind to and react with your cell receptors. So the more sadness peptides <laughs> that are, uh, are released are going to bind more with cells. And when the cells duplicate or replicate, there's going to be more cell receptors that are looking for sadness peptides. So it's important to start rewiring the brain. And this is what we call neuroplasticity. If we're rewiring the brain and, the, and our thought patterns, then, then the thoughts are going to affect the way we feel and different peptides are going to start getting released. Maybe joy, peace, love. Um, those are the types of pe peptides that we're looking for so that they're, when they're binding to the cell receptors, they're having a different energetic response. Um, we have three brains, and science reveals that there are complex neural processing functions both in the mind, heart, and the gut. So the mind functions as the director of our bodies, but the subconscious mind directs 90% of our behavior. So we are only conscious of 10% of what we do. The heart is the discerner. So this is the part that kind of feels through the things that our mind is directing us to do. Uh, and there are more neuropathways that run from the heart to the brain than from the brain to the heart. And we are electromagnetic beings. I mean, this is why if you were to touch a socket, <laughs> you, would get, you would feel electrocuted because there's electromagnetic waves that are running through your body. If you were to measure your ele electromagnetic frequency on an EEG, your head signal actually doesn't go out very far, but your heart actually goes out 5,000 times more than your head. So if you want to learn more about this, I recommend checking out the Heart Math Institute. Um, they've done a lot of studies on this. So if you are trying to affect your electromagnetic frequency of your body, you want to raise your frequency, especially around your heart space. So if you are feeling any emotions like grief, anger, sadness, a lot of times you'll notice it rests in the chest or the throat. And to me, the throat is just where a lot of emotions get backed up because we swallow them. You know, we swallow our words. We don't say what we mean. We're not fully expressing ourselves. And then the heart doesn't really want to feel it. So a lot of those emotions get stuck in our throat. We have a lot of tension in our throat. We might grind our teeth. So it's important to begin clearing emotions out of the heart space, anything that might be stifling the heart signal so that we have the capacity to spread love and light and not more pain. And this to me is a very important part of the process that we're experiencing right now is, you know, a lot of this trauma that we're feeling is unearthing old traumas that we never processed through that we just repressed because it was too uncomfortable, too difficult. Maybe we didn't have the tools to sort through those feelings. Um, so a lot of what we're feeling as a collective is old trauma. Um, and then there is some new trauma that's being you know, kicked up because a lot of people are, are feeling um, like they're working through these emotions faster than they're ready to. So the best thing we can do is be gentle with ourselves and start moving forward in a way that feels manageable, uh, might feel uncomfortable, but you have to start trusting your gut, which is the processor, around what you feel like you're ready for. So 90% of the body's serotonin and other feel-good chemicals are produced in the gut. Um, and, you know, oftentimes people call this the second brain because, you know, the, so it would be the mind, the gut, and then the heart. <laughs> um, but really, um, they're finding in a lot of studies right now that the gut microbiome is the number one indicator of overall health. So if you are feeling sluggish, you're feeling tired, you're feeling like you get sick a lot, um, if you're having trouble processing your emotions, there could be also some dysbiosis in the gut that needs to be sorted through. And a lot of times, you know, if we are not paying attention to our gut instincts and we're suppressing those, that could also lead to gut dysbiosis. So it could be a combination of what we're eating, what we're consuming, and what we're not allowing to flow. 
because all of this is just chemical response in our system and feelings are chemicals that can either help or hurt. So we're gonna talk about the frequency of essential oils and help, how that helps to raise our electromagnetic frequency in our body. So first you'll see this, this uh, very happy lady here. <laughs> She is feeling connected. And when all the brain, three brains are connected, we feel good. We have overall wellness. So your brains instinctively process every life experience. So she's having a tough day with the dog and the baby and somebody trying to get her on the phone for a work meeting. And she starts processing. The brain says, I have to figure this out. The heart feels overwhelmed. And then the gut feels stuck. And the reaction can be physical. There could be head tension. She starts to get, you know, a headache. Um, maybe she starts feeling conflicted and there's a little anxiety and stress that kicks up. And then the gut is unsettled and that might result in an upset stomach. Maybe there's some, you know, acid reflux or constipation or the opposite that, that starts to affect her because of this, you know, this processing where she doesn't quite feel equipped to manage the emotions that are coming up. And then she may start to have a belief that she's not good enough. And when we marry thought and feeling, it starts to create beliefs to a point where we begin to, we begin to feel our beliefs. We don't think our beliefs, we begin to feel them because the thoughts produced feelings that created the belief system. And then the prominent experience when we have a belief is an emotion. And that's why people um, right now are so activated in their emotions is because they have very strong beliefs. And some people have had these beliefs since a very young age and beliefs start to create identity. And when people's identities are threatened, their ego gets involved and the ego is meant to protect. So, it may take time for some folks who have very strong beliefs to work through those beliefs and be able to see another point of view. And in my experience, all we can do is seek openness. And I've had to, you know, step back on certain conversations with people who I feel maybe just aren't ready or aren't open to hearing another point of view. And I have to resist the urge to criticize because that just ends up shutting people down even more and it ends up creating upset within myself. So the best thing I can do is work on my own belief system. If I'm paying attention to what's, you know, anxiety and stress coming up in my body, I have to start asking myself, what belief is, is this, is, is producing these feelings? What belief is causing this discomfort in my system? And how do I begin working through that? Because I've watered and nourished this belief for a long time, even if it's not a healthy belief, but it was a belief that somehow my ego thought protected me. And emotions are really just energy in motion. So, you know, we have to begin to understand what kind of energy we are putting into motion in our bodies. And if it's something that doesn't feel good or does not serve us, how do we redirect that energy to create different motion in our bodies? One thing to note too is if someone is coming from their heart, you'll know because it will magnify the experience of your own heart. If someone is coming from their head, it's going to start to put you in your head. So this is where you can start um, really using that gut instinct <laughs> to, to, to remind yourself of where to pay attention. So when you're experiencing someone, if you start talking to someone and they get really heady with you, you may have to drop into your heart because the frequency, remember, it's 5,000 times more powerful than your head. So if you start to drop into your heart, you can help someone else drop into their heart. So if you're getting into an argument with somebody and you feel like you're butting heads, literally, energetically, start to drop into your heart and see if you can notice the shift in the energy. So we can see the overall picture here of her life experience. She begins processing, she has a reaction and it creates a, a new belief or belief system. And we have to start weeding out some of these beliefs that don't serve us. So we'll talk about essential oils and how they support healthy emotions. So an oil like wild orange, which is the oil of abundance, it's extremely uplifting. And the way the oil works on our body is very similar to the way the plant grows. So if you think about citruses, citrus fruits, 
They typically grow in warm, sunny climates, high on a tree. And when we use those oils, they make us feel warm, bright and sunny, and very high and uplifted. So that's one way to keep in mind if you're looking to have a certain ex emotional experience, consider how the, the essential oil, the plant that creates the essential oil grows. If you're looking to feel really grounded because you're feeling stressed and up in your head, you might use a tree oil because the roots of the trees grow very deep into the ground and they're very foundational and, um, and stabilizing. So oils support healthy cell function. They anchor healthy biochemistry and they promote physical and emotional detox. And scientifically, the reason why oils can do that is because they are made of fatty acid chains and our cell membranes are also made of fatty acids. So they're lipids. So the essential oil can pass through the cell membrane um, and it can get on the inside of the cell and clean up the cell almost like a housekeeper. So it can interact with the cell in a very positive and rejuvenating way. You can see here, we've got some peppermint oil. And if you used a magnifying glass, you would have what looks like the terrain of a foreign planet, <laughs> some sort of alien planet here. Um, the little white sacs are the oil sacs. And when you crush a peppermint leaf in between your fingers, the sacs burst and create the aroma. So um, essential oils are not like typical oil because they turn from liquid to gas very quickly. That's why you can smell the aroma so quickly. So peppermint, the, um, the peppermint essential oil, when it's distilled and when it's extracted and distilled from the leaf, it's extremely concentrated and it ends up being 50 to 70 times more powerful than the leaf itself. So one drop of essential oil has the therapeutic equivalent of 28 cups of peppermint tea. So it's one of the reasons I love essential oils because I don't need to use very much. It's going to, if I, if I were to inhale it within 20 seconds, it would go to my brain and have a chemical reaction in my brain within about 22 seconds. Within two minutes, it is in my bloodstream. And within 20 minutes, the oil will be in every cell in my body. So it works very quickly. I only need one or two drops. So a bottle like this peppermint, it has 250 drops. It's gonna last me, if I use one or two drops a day, it's gonna last me quite a few months, um, You know, somewhere between like three and six months. So it's very cost effective as well. So you're getting high potency plant therapy at a very reasonable cost. It's extremely high quality and you're able to affect your system on a cellular level, which, you know, most over-the-counter and pharmaceutical options are, do not give you that capability. One drop of essential oil has 40 million trillion molecules, and that's more molecules than you have cells in your body. So one drop of oil can service every single cell of your body in, within 20 minutes. That's some powerful chemistry right there. You have, to use, you have to choose carefully though, because not all oils are created equal. If you buy an oil at like Best Buy, it is not gonna have the same effect as a therapeutic grade oil. And you would not wanna take something that you've purchased at an electronic store internally, because you probably end up doing a lot of damage to your system, especially your liver. Your liver. So the grade of oil you choose is gonna determine its chemistry, its potency, and its efficacy. And there are four grades of essential oil. There's synthetic, which, you know, they might smell good, but they typically come in air fresheners, body sprays, room sprays, um, candles. These can be extremely toxic, especially if you're smelling them, because within 22 seconds, you're having a chemical reaction in your brain. And, you know, a lot of people will say that they're allergic to lavender, and it's because 85% of the lavender on the market is synthetic. That's all we've really known as human beings. So your body just starts to shut down when it smells something like lavender because it's protecting itself. You end up having an inflammatory response to something that is what your body is interpreting as an invader. There's food grade oil, which oftentimes can be genetically modified, which is not so good for your DNA. Um, and these can be in the form of cooking extracts and flavorings. It can be in gum, you know, candies. Um, so they can, they're, you know, they're safe to ingest by the FDA, but they're not exactly healthy. 
you have to be really care, careful with the food grade extracts that you're using. Then there's therapeutic grade, which is definitely a better quality, and it's the quality that we've known for the last few decades. However, there's an unregulated standard. Many companies that claim that they are therapeutic buy oils from a broker. And so many different companies are getting oils from the same broker, but they're just branding it with their own brand. It's similar to how like 365 Whole Foods or um, Trader Joe's works like, or Sprouts, like they're getting brands from, uh, you know, they're getting what would be branded by other companies. They're getting those things from a broker, but they're just putting the, the, um, the Sprouts brand on it so that it ends up being cheaper for them to purchase. Um, so this quality can be compromised. They're typically not tested as thoroughly. Um, and there can be marginal health benefits. They might smell good. They might give you some benefit, but if you've ever said to yourself, like, I don't really think essential oils work. I've used them before and I don't really get it. Probably you haven't been using a high enough quality or you haven't been using it properly. So my, um, my recommendation is certified pure therapeutic grade oil. That is the standard that doTERRA abides by. They do about 17 different tests on their oils to ensure that they're pure, free of fillers. Um, they're free of fillers. They're free of contaminants. They're free of pesticides, no GMOs. They're completely pure essential oil. They come from beyond organic sources. So they're extracted from their natural habitat. Um, so the frankincense comes, comes from Oman. The vetiver comes from Haiti. The um, the lemons come from Sicily, the lavender comes from Bulgaria and France, and they're all harvested in an socio-economically and environmentally sustainable way. They create partnerships with artisan farmers so that um, these farmers are treated with respect and dignity and they're paid fairly, and that the land is treated so that there is no over-harvesting, um, everything is sustainably processed, and in certain areas where they're using, say, wood to produce oils, they're doing so in a way that the, the waste matter is repurposed. Um, and, uh, you know, in some, in some places in the logging industry, they're taking the existing waste matter from the logging industry and they're producing high quality essential oils from it. So um, doTERRA is very sustainably conscious. And I believe that this adds to the frequency of the oil because there is so much love and integrity put into the product. As we know, our heart, when we're coming from a strong place of love, it is 5,000 times more powerful in their frequency. So that kind of frequency also impacts the things around us. Have you ever heard of that um, experiment with water where somebody yelled at water and said all these horrible expletives to one cup of water and then they you know, expressed all this love to the other cup of water? And when you put it on a magnified, um, when you, when you magnified the water, you could see that um, the water molecules in the love cup were all crystalline and beautiful, and the molecules in the hate cup were all like disgusting and like slimy looking. Um, so it really, the, the way in which something is produced is so important. And there are a lot of videos on doTERRA's YouTube page. You can look at their co-impact sourcing. If you Google doTERRA co-impact sourcing or doTERRA healing hands, you can watch videos and see for yourself how these oils are um, extracted and distilled um, after they're harvested. You can even see the harvesting process in some cases. Um, and so all the oils are um, tested by a third party and they're tested in house so that there's a very clear checks and balances system and doTERRA will never sell anything that does not meet their standards of quality and purity. So they're going for not only purity, but also potency. So if they say that peppermint is going to have a certain benefit, you feel and experience the benefit. So how do you use essential oils to upgrade your spiritual and emotional wellness? So oh, essential oils are dynamic. So they're gonna supply targeted support for your body, meaning they're almost like adaptogens. If you've heard of adaptogenic herbs, they give your body what it needs. So for instance, peppermint, some people, it calms them down because that's what their body needs energetically. For other people, it energizes them. And for you, it could do different things at different times of day. So if you are super anxious in the morning and you are feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm over the top, I can't get my work done because I just feel like I can't breathe. 
you smell a little peppermint oil and it brings you back into your body. It opens up the capillaries in your brain and allows more oxygen to flow through. And you also start breathing more deeply, which helps to ground your system in safety. Later in the day, around three o'clock, you might be feeling like you're dragging and you're falling asleep. And so you smell a little peppermint oil. And again, it brings oxygen into your brain and then it, it perks you up because that's what your body needs in that moment. Um, peppermint is also a wonderful oil for heart expansion. It's the oil of a buoyant heart. And because it opens up the lungs, um, and you'll notice if you smell peppermint, it's gonna open up your sinuses almost immediately. Um, and it'll open up the lungs and it helps to release any stuck energy in the lungs. So that's a great oil to use if you are feeling a lot of grief or sadness. Now, this is my favorite part about essential oils. They have an electro, electrical frequency or a vibration, and it's measured in megahertz. And you can see um, these, uh, you know, these different measurements for the brain, for the body. Processed or canned foods has basically no frequency at all. So it really has no nutritional value. Obviously, if it's your only option, then of course, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. But <laughs> the best is to have fresh produce, um, herbs, um, you know, fresh herbs are obviously better than dry herbs. And then therapeutic grade essential oils, which you can use in your cooking, are off the charts in terms of their frequency. So they can really elevate. Like if you're feeling sick, um, using essential oils can help elevate your frequency from a, a dis-ease frequency to a, the normal frequency of the human body. So it's one of the reasons I like to use essential oils every day because it helps to keep my frequency high. And I have noticed a huge difference over the last six years of using oils. When I first started using oils, I was extremely, um, you know, on an emotional roller coaster. I was an insomniac. Uh, I was having a lot of trouble just, you know, managing my day. I mean, there was a, a period where for seven days in a row, I didn't sleep. I had to call out of work. I couldn't drive a car because I felt like I was drunk. I almost called an ambulance to come pick me up because I was starting to lose my mind. And I had tried all of the natural stuff I could find, all of the over-the-counter over stuff. I tried prescription stuff. I even tried some illegal stuff, which is no longer illegal, but at the time it was. Um, I was so desperate. And it was a friend of mine who recommended a combination of three different essential oils that I put on my chest and on the bottoms of my feet. And then for the first time, and I can't even remember how long, I fell asleep within 15 minutes. And when I woke up the next day, I was like, okay, we need to do that every day for the rest of my life. <laughs> um, and what's amazing with oils is over time, the more consistently you use them, the less you need them. So I don't really need oils as much for physical issues. I'm working now on deeper rooted emotional and spiritual st stagnancy. Um, and, you know, I sleep by myself. Like I don't need oils to fall asleep anymore. It took about three months of using them every night for me to be able to fall asleep on my own. And now when I travel or if I'm feeling extra stressed or especially during my cycle when my hormones are a little bit out of whack, I use oils more at night, but I really don't need them. Like I retrained my neurological system to rest at night. Now everybody's body is a little bit different and your body chemistry is going to be a little bit different. Um, but we do sleep studies. So if that's something that you are interested in and you want to try some samples and be a part of a sleep study in our group, please send me a message at amanda at realurbanwellness.com. You'll get a week's worth of um, samples and you'll get to try the sleep protocol to see if it might help you the way that it helps me. So emotions have differing frequencies as well. And this is the vibrational scale of consciousness. Um, so the law of vibration activates the law of attraction and you can attract what you are sending out. So you want to increase your frequency. As you can see here, if you are experiencing things like, you know, willingness, acceptance, reason, love, joy, you're going to be on much higher on the scale. So if you are feeling anger, fear, desire, which can sometimes feel like desperation, grief, there's a lot of guilt and shame circulating right now you're at a really low frequency. And that's gonna keep the things that you want very far away. Or you're going to start attracting things that you don't want. You're gonna be attracting experiences that create more guilt and shame because that's the frequency that you're vibrating at. So using oils can help to increase your vibration and boost your feeling state so that you can keep your frequency at a higher vibration and attract more of what you want, not more of what you don't want. And these 
emotions that are on the lower part of the scale make you feel a lot more contracted, whereas these emotions will make you feel more expanded. Now, with every contraction, there is an expansion. We know this from birth. You know, any woman who gives birth knows, I, I don't know this personally, but I've heard a lot about it because my sister-in-law just gave birth. But when you have a contraction, you have an expansion. So there's no shame in having contractions. It's always going to happen. It's this cycle of life. But this too shall pass. And you can manage your emotions more with essential oils so you don't have to get stuck in contraction. Because it, it can be easy to get stuck in contraction. We, we don't have tools to manage our emotions. So there are three ways to use essential oils, and aromatic is the fastest way to manage your emotions and shift your mood. These aromatic molecules have direct access to the brain. So the sense of smell is really the only sense that has direct access to the brain. So this is the limbic area or the emotional seat of the brain. Um, so uh, the the emotional seat of the brain is um, where you store memory, you store emotion, and it can have a, a huge effect on your daily well-being. Um, so you are, by smelling an oil, you are changing your neurochemistry. And the amygdala is the part of the brain that manages emotions, and the hippocampus is the, the part of the brain that manages new memories, and they're all part of the limbic system. So if you are creating new emotional memories, <laughs> you create a memory and then it has usually a, a, a correlated feeling. Like for instance, for me, when I think about my grandmother coming over to babysit, she'd always bring us these delicious sandwiches and homemade brownies. And the feeling that I have is just safety and care and love. So that memory is connected to a feeling. So you can start to rewrite what feelings are associated to your memories. Um, and you can start to anchor new beliefs through this process. Now, one thing too is um, when you are smelling essential oils, if you're, especially if, if you're feeling stress, essential oils can help to release the, um, release cortisol in your brain, which is, you know, basically associated with fear. Um, and so you can, you know, stop the release of cortisol to prevent it from entering the cells and you can start regulating your DNA that way. And DNA repair is so critical right now because of all the genetic, genetically modified foods and products that are out there that are affecting our DNA. We have to work very um, explicitly on DNA repair and what you are feeling and thinking is going to affect how your DNA is expressed. There are 350 million people who are depressed. And we really need to look at the connection to gut health as well. Um, they've done studies where depression can lift within 24 hours when the, when the depression is caused by inflammation. And inflammation is usually regulated by the gut microbiome. So all of this is completely connected. Like we said in the beginning, you can't affect one part of the system without affecting another part of the system. One of my favorite oils for managing stress is balance oil. This is one of the oils I used um, for my sleep. It brings so much harmony to the body. There is this really amazing study. If you Google doTERRA balance blood test, blood sample, um, basically, someone ate a bunch of sugar and junk food and then they tested their they did a blood sample and they looked at their blood under a mi microscope and the blood was all like coagulated and sticky and then they put balance on the bottoms of their feet and waited 30 seconds and took another blood sample and their cells were all fluffy and buoyant so it only took 30 seconds for balance to have an effect on the cells um, and you can see this um, video yourself if you just do a quick Google search or if, you're, if you email me, I'm happy to send it to you. Um, you can also use oils topically. Um, so balance, I like to use in a diffuser at night or you can put it on the bottoms of your feet. Um, and so this stimulates self-repair. Some of the best places to put oils are on pulse points or along the spine because you have so many nerves along the spine. Um, also on the bottoms of the feet because bottoms of feet, the feet are a map of your whole system. You can apply it in your belly button because that's another area where 
the nerves are connected to all different parts of your, your, your body. Um, but really anywhere you feel like you want to put them, you can put them. You don't want to put them in your eyes or inside of your ears or up your nose or in any other sensitive areas of your body. But other than that, you could pretty much put them anywhere. And if there's an oil that's hot or spicy or too minty, you would li likely want to dilute it with fractionated coconut oil. And that's my preferred carrier uh, because it is, um, it is uh, the fatty acid chains are removed so there's no scent. So it doesn't smell like coconut oil. It, it's not ingestible, but it is for topical use and it's liquid, odorless, colorless. Um, and that's at all temperatures. So that's my favorite carrier oil. It's a very thin oil, so it absorbs into the skin very quickly. Um, and I do recommend diluting simply because essential oils, again, they, are, they turn from liquid to gas very quickly. So if you mix the essential oil with a carrier oil, the larger fatty acid chains of the carrier oil are gonna trap the essential oil so more of it gets into your skin and less of it evaporates into the air. It also helps to prevent any skin sensitivity and you can cover more surface area when it's mixed with the coconut oil. You can get it more, more like on your entire back and you don't have to use as much of your essential oil product to cover large um, areas of your body. Grief. So I mentioned peppermint is good for sadness and opening up the heart. There is some peppermint in Breathe. Um, so this is really good and really supportive for processing grief. So, you know, in my, you know, you can call me a little woo, a little spiritual here, but I don't think there's a, any um, accidents. Um, and I don't think it's a coincidence that COVID affects the lungs and the respiratory system. I do feel like collectively there's a lot of grief and trauma that as humans, we are being forced to process now because crisis often forces us to do things that we may have otherwise avoided. <laughs> um, and so br breathe is very supportive for anyone who is dealing with any respiratory discomfort. And that can be associated with an, any sort of emotional um, discomfort as well. So if you are wanting to support your overall system right now and processing emotions and supporting it physically, Breathe is an awesome oil to dilute with some fractionated coconut oil and rub over the chest, or you can also put it in the diffuser. You can even mix it with balance oil. Um, both of these are going to help to increase the frequency of your system and help to get it out of a disease frequency into a healthy body frequency. And then finally, you can take oils internally. Do not take an oil internally unless it has supplement facts on the bottle. If it does not have supplement facts, do not ingest it. You could get yourself sick if you are taking something that has not been tested for purity and potency. So you can take oils under the tongue, in water, or in a gel cap. Um, doTERRA sells these empty veggie capsules for like four bucks. You get 160 of them and they'll last you for a very long time. But something like oregano you'd want to take in a gel cap, you wouldn't want to put that under your tongue or in water because doTERRA's is so potent. Um, and you know things like um, peppermint you could take in, in, in water. On guard, I'd put under the tongue. That's really good for immune support. Um, but this helps to balance overall chemical reactions in the body. So um, I like to put oils under the tongue if I'm trying to bypass um, the digestive system and I just wanna get it directly into my bloodstream. I'll put it under my tongue. So things like frankincense, which are really supportive for the mood. They're also really good for DNA repair and, and cellular support. Um, those you know, oils like that I'll put under my tongue. And then there are some oils that are, are potent and pure, but you wouldn't eat the plant counterpart, so you wouldn't eat the oil. Like cedarwood, you don't eat cedarwood bark, so you wouldn't eat cedarwood oil. But something like lemon, you can eat lemons, um, so you can eat lemon oil. On guard. So I mentioned that for immune support, but this is also really supportive if you're feeling vulnerable. I think many of us are feeling vulnerable right now because we are, uh, you know, looking at ourselves in a way that we may not have before. And so it may feel raw. It might feel hard. It might feel um, like you can't take it anymore. And so this helps to just give you an energetic bubble, a little bit of a shield so that you can feel your vulnerability without feeling like you're going to get attacked. Um, so it's really good for emotional strength. And at the same time, because it's the protective blend, it's going to protect your immune system from attacks. 
So energetic and physical invaders, you get extra protection from with on guard. Call it like your Jedi force field. So if you want to make a blend, um, you know, you may not have all of these oils at the ready. This is a pretty intricate blend, but um, this is a blend called I Am Safe. You could put it in a five milliliter roller bo bottle or a 10 milliliter. You could double the recipe if you have a 10 milliliter bottle. Um, this is by Desiree Mangendog. She has some amazing books on managing emotions with the oils. Um, a couple of my favorites, I Am Magnetic and I Am Worthy. Those are really powerful and she gives um, a five-week protocols and I found that I have experienced huge emotional shifts using those. Um, so this is a blend that you can try. Feel free to take a screenshot of it. Um, and if you don't have all of these oils, you can try um, a couple. The, the main three I would use from this would be eucalyptus, peppermint, and frankincense. Those are probably the most common oils that you might already have. Um, if you don't have eucalyptus, you could use breathe oil. Um, but of course, if you have all these oils, this is a great blend to help just um, feel emotionally and physically safe and energetically safe. So um, some additional lifestyle choices are increasing your water intake. This is a great way to flush out anything that might be stuck in the system. I recommend adding citrus oils because those are the most supportive oils for cleansing the body. So lemon, grapefruit, wild orange, uh, bergamot. You can increase your exercise and movement. And I would say um, breathe and peppermint are really great for exercise and movement because it helps to increase blood flow to the brain and open up the lungs. You can rest and meditate. Um, so balance, serenity, frankincense, sandalwood, and then improve your diet. And you can use oils in your cooking. That's gonna increase the frequency of your food. You'd wanna add the oils um, after the food is cooked. So you'd, you'd wanna mix it into like olive oil as a dressing or a sauce. You wouldn't wanna cook the oils so much because it ends up breaking down the therapeutic value. Um, but if you are using oils just for flavor, it's fine to cook them if you wanna add like oregano to a pasta sauce. But I'd recommend doing it after the sauce has cooled down a little bit. Um, you can also use digest then to help digestion, and it also helps not only to digest your food, but to digest life experiences. And then moment by moment support. So what are you feeling right now? Most of you who are watching already have oils at home. You can reach for an oil or two that best meets your emotional needs in this moment. I recommend getting the Emotions and Essential Oils book. Um, you can get this on aromatools.com or oillife.com about like a $24 book um, and it's so thorough. It goes through every single oil that doTERRA offers and how it can support you emotionally. And in the back of the book, there's an appendix. So you can look up any emotion that you were feeling. If you're feeling lonely, if you're feeling melancholy, if you're feeling fearful, if you're feeling like you want to feel gentle, it'll give you oils that you can try. Um, and I use this book almost every day. Uh, and I often use it like I'm pulling a card for myself. I'll just flip to a page and I'll just like ask a question and then flip to a page and then it'll tell me what oil to use. And that's, I'm always like, oh my God, that's exactly the oil I need today. So that's a fun way to use the book. You fill a bucket drop by drop, you clear your mind thought by thought and you heal yourself moment by moment. So speaking of being gentle, it's really important for us to be gentle right now. We don't wanna create more trauma in our bodies. We want to work on, you know, talking to ourselves as if we would talk to a child, because a lot of these beliefs that we have started as kids. We were just little computers that were downloading information from the environment around us, and we were not discerning at that age. We couldn't tell if something was good or something was bad. We just heard it, and we just logged it as truth. So we have to really be as gentle with ourselves as possible. How would you talk to a toddler <laughs> or a young, you know, five or six-year-old? And, and just know that, you know, whatever anyone else is telling you is coming from their own trauma body in most cases. You know, most cases people are not like awakened enlightened beings to the fullest extent. You know, people's triggers can create triggers in you. And if they're triggered, they're responding with a triggered sense of being. So be gentle with yourself and be gentle with others, even if they're yelling at you. Again, how do you come from your heart space? Because this is the best, you know, this is the best medicine that we have. 
um, and oils like rose oil, which doTERRA sells in a touch format and a five milliliter format, geranium oil, ylang ylang, which is the oil for the inner child. Um, those types of oils, you know, rose, I mean, flower oils are going to be really powerful for getting your heart frequency um, up and high and, you know, affecting those around you in a more positive way. There's a help. It's sort of like, you know, um, that, that image of the, the um, person who put the flower in, a, like, in a gun to sort of deflect um, the intensity of that moment. It's, that's sort of what you're doing. You're like putting flowers around the energetic guns that might be coming towards you. Um, you can see here the um, there's an emotional aromatherapy kit. So if you're really looking like you need, you're really feeling like you need emotional support right now, you can get six oils in a five milliliter bottle um, format, or you can get them in a ten milliliter roller bottle. The five mil you can either make your own bo uh, roller bottles, or you can diffuse them. Or the existing 10 milliliter bottle versions just make it really easy. They're already pre diluted and you can put them on like perfume and keep them in your bag or your purse or by your desk and just apply them throughout the day. Um, I have mine sitting by my computer. So anytime before I get onto a call or if I'm, you know, doing a webinar, I will put oils on like cheer or motivate. Or if I'm feeling anxious, I'll put peace on. I've been using console and forgive a lot went through a breakup um, at the beginning of March and it was really difficult to sort through my emotions around that. My mom sent me like four bottles of console and forgive and I was taking baths and Epsom salt every night. And I really do help. I, I, I don't think I could have handled it. Otherwise I was in quarantine by myself and um, it was really difficult because I didn't have as, you know, I didn't have anybody that I could go meet up with and process with. So I had to do a lot of processing on my own. Um, and this was extremely supportive for me. So I feel like completely free of a lot of that grief and sadness that I was dealing with. Um, but the way this, this um, wheel works is if you're feeling a certain emotion, say you're feeling insecure, it's in the mint piece of the pie. And on either side of mint is peace and motivate. So those are the two primary oils that you could use if you're feeling insecure. So if you're feeling bored, where does bored live? board lives in the spice piece of the pie. So on either side of that is passion and cheer. So if you're feeling bored, you could use passion or cheer or a combination of both to help you with your boredom. So I love this because it's a, you know, a, um, an easy way to get started with, with using oils for emotional support because you have this really cool, simple guide. And those are the two formats, the five milliliter kit and then the 10 milliliter roller bottles. It's called the, the touch system. Now, this is another um, recommendation, this prayer. You can take a screenshot of this, the Ho'oponopono. Um, this is really powerful to be doing on a collective level right now. I'm sorry, forgive me, thank you, I love you. Um, and you can absolutely use a combination of oils for this. Um, forgive, console, rose oil, and wild orange are um, the, the four that I would recommend. And you can put it on different parts of your body if you like, back of your neck, on your chest. Um, but this would be one that I would do in meditation for a few minutes every morning and every night if you can. And you'll find that you're, you know, for me, my frequency, I can feel my body uplifting while I'm doing this prayer. Foundational support. So what do you want to plant? Now, um, we talked mostly about oils, but overall, if we want to raise our frequency, we can do it emotionally, and then we can also do it physically by clearing out the gut and supporting the gut microbiome. And this pack, this Lifelong Vitality Pack, gives you your daily support of micronutrients, minerals, and healthy fats. It has an omega, it has a multivitamin, and it has... Um, DNA repair in the cellular vitality complex. So we talked about DNA repair and how critical that is. You're getting everything you need in this pack. And because there are essential oils in the omega, it enhances the absorption of nutrition on a cellular level. Because remember, we talked about how essential oils can enter in through the, fat, the fatty lipids of the cell membrane. So it can help push the nutrition of the vitality pack 
into the cells so more of it becomes bioavailable. This makes this increases the bioavailability of the oil. Um, and then you can cleanse and restore your gut health. If you, if you feel ready for a cleanse, summer is kind of a great time to do this. So if you're already feeling inspired to eat fruits and vegetables and more salads, you can be doing a cleanse to help clean out the gut because digestive function is scientifically linked to mood. Um, now, bad bacteria. So stress can cause cortisol to release from the adrenal glands. And, you know, that ends up creating a lot of um, havoc in the body. And then bad bacteria in the gut can increase inflammation. Um, so, you know, we don't want inflammation. That is not so good. Um, this can cause a lot of problems in the system, especially in the brain. Um, and so, you know, if you are experiencing any skin issues, any eczema, psoriasis, acne, it's not that oils are going to cure you, um, but th that's a chimney. You know, you have, you have two main uh, locations of elimination through your urine and through your bowel movements. And then you have your skin, which is another chimney. If things are coming out of your skin and you're having skin issues, it's because your gut is backed up and it's not functioning properly. Um, so you want to take a healthy probiotic and a digestive enzyme. I like this digestive enzyme um, because it breaks down the food that you are eating and makes it more bioavailable to your intestines. And then the probiotic is um, really scientifically advanced because it's enterically coated. Most probiotics are killed by your stomach acids. So 90% of 97% of probiotics that you would ingest are being killed by your stomach, the acids in your stomach. So this is a double capsule delivery system that you get most of the probiotic in your actual intestines. It bypasses the digestive system of your stomach and into your gut. So it's really critical to drink water about 30 minutes before you eat a meal. And then don't drink water during a meal because you want to have a concentrate of acid to food because it helps with your digestive system. So about 30 minutes before you eat, you could have a little water with lemon. And then don't drink during a meal. If you really need water, have tiny sips and put a little digestin in it. And you can take your probiotics with your food. The GX Assist um, cleans out the system. So it cleans out parasites or any other bugs that might be lingering in the system. And then the Zendocrine cleans out, um, it, it's like a, basically a heavy metal chelator. So it cleans out heavy metals out of the system and out of the cells. So this comes as a kit. So if this is something that you want to explore, let me know and I can give you a 30 day to 60 day protocol, depending on how long you need to cleanse. If you've done a lot of antibiotics and over the counter and prescription drugs or eaten a lot of um, processed foods, you may need to do up to 60 days of this cleanse. But you can eat normally, you can you know, eat a healthy diet, you don't have to starve yourself. This is supplementation based, so it's very easy to follow. And if you don't like swallowing pills, you can mix up these, um, these supplements into your food, especially in a, like a morning smoothie. So I can walk you through this process if this is something you want to explore. So if you're, if you're experiencing any physical issues with your skin, your digestive system, bloating, gas, or if you're having mood imbalances, I highly recommend doing this. I used to suffer from really severe acne and I did this cleanse and within 30 days, I had people in my office pulling me aside and asking me if I had gotten a face peel. And I was like, no, I'm doing a cleanse. Um, and it, had, it has completely transformed my skin. I really only break out if I eat sugar now. So I used to just break out for no reason before, but this helped to clean out a lot of the issues that were causing hormonal imbalance in my system. So for emotional support, if you're already using doTERRA, you already have an account, um, you can add this to your life, um, your loyalty rewards program, and you could do the lifelong vitality pack and the emotional aromatherapy kit. Um, this month, if you do a 200 PV order, you're going to get a free 10 milliliter Immortel oil, which is the most amazing oil for anti-aging. I use it on my skin every single night. I would not go a day without it. Um, so you can get that for free. This combo of the lifelong vitality pack and the emotional aromatherapy kit is 160 PV. So you just need to add on about 40 PV 
So you could add on like some citrus oils or um, you know anything else that strikes your fancy. If you order by the 15th, you'll also get a Neo Uli oil. I'm not sure if I said that right, but it smells sort of like eucalyptus. It's in the Breathe blend. Um, and it's really supportive for skin, digestive, um, I'm sorry, respiratory support and all of the grief and sadness stuff we were talking about. Um, and then in the second month, you can get your lifelong vitality pack again, and you could add on the Terrazyme, the PB Assist. You can add on some Citrus Bliss, which is mood boosting, and Elevation, which is also extremely mood boosting. These are two of my favorite emotional support oils. And then the third month, the lifelong vitality pack. Zendocrine as a cleanse, and then Serenity and Balance, which is a combo for sleep. So these are some recommendations. You could also just get the cleanse kit, which combines the Lifelong Vitality Pack and the Terrazyme, the PB Assist, and the Zendocrine. So again, if you need some guidance on this, please just reach out to me. And then if you have kids who are dealing with um, some emotional upset, because this is a rough time for kids too. They're so empathic and they absorb so much of what's around them energetically. Um, there are kids supplements, chewable um, vitamins and a liquid omega, and then a powder probiotic that you can mix into yogurt or oatmeal or applesauce. Uh, and then they have a kid's collection of oils in roller bottles, pre-diluted, that comes in a little pack. And um, you know what I love is kids who are old enough, by the time they're about five or six, they can start applying these oils themselves on the bottoms of their feet or you can apply it to their spine. Um, and so kids love being empowered by applying oils themselves. So some final thoughts on ways to upgrade. Um, there are so many different self-care practices. If you've tried tapping, or if you haven't tried tapping, um, just look up EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique. It's a super easy technique that helps to combine affirmations and acupressure on, on um, meridian points in the body to help release stuck emotion. And I love using frankincense and Melissa while I'm tapping. Um, you can do breath work um, and breathe. Peppermint and eucalyptus are oils that you can diffuse or, or um, dilute and put on the chest. So any kind of breath work, breath of fire, you could do, there's breath work teachers who can support you. Once you've learned how to do breath work, you can do it on your own. Um, but it's really important to affirm right now that you can breathe, that breathing is free and open. Um, you know, whatever we are affirming is what we are attracting. You can do yoga. There's a yoga collection that has the oils of Arise, Anchor, and Align. Um, meditation is powerful. Uh, I like using sandalwood on my third eye, elevation on my crown chakra. Uh, any sort of sound, singing binaural beats um you can do there's these solegio frequencies that you can google um and, and find on youtube i like using pettigrain and lemongrass lemongrass is the oil of cleansing and sound frequency is one of the most powerful ways to cleanse the body and alchemize any um unwanted or unpleasant frequencies and pedigree is the oil of ancestry. And I think all of us are really feeling ancestral wounding right now. Um, whether you believe it or not, you know, your DNA gets passed down. And as we talked about, emotions can affect the way our DNA is expressed. So, if, you know, ancestral traumas, ancestral feelings, ancestral emotions can absolutely get passed down. Walking meditation. Um, I like to use cedarwood, arbor vitae. You can add in some balance. Those are really grounding. Um, affirmations, lavender and spearmint are both for confident speech and um, expression. So you can put it on your throat chakra if you are using affirmations in your daily practice, uh, especially if you're doing gratitude, wild orange, and spikenard. Spikenard is not a common oil, but it's the oil of gratitude. So those are two oils you could combine. And put it over your heart space or diffuse. You can also go and earth. We've been stuck inside, and that is really hard for emotional health because you know we get our a lot of our electromagnetic upgrades from the electromagnetic connection to the earth. And because we walk around a lot of times with rubber soles, rubber soles, they they don't allow us to connect with that electromagnetic frequency. It kills the frequency. So go stick your feet in some dirt or in the beach if you can. Even if you can't sit on the beach, just stick your feet in something that's, you know, got an electromagnetic frequency. Um, and those are vetiver and myrrh. 
are really powerful for that. Um, again, balance. We just love, just love balance. Um, but myrrh is the oil of Mother Earth. Um, so that's an oil you definitely want to consider if you're going to go earth yourself. And if you can't get outside, then having some vetiver and myrrh at home will help because again, they're high frequency oils. You can put them on the bottoms of your feet and it will help you feel like you're being earth. Dancing is a wonderful way to move um, emotions. Talk about energy and motion. Um, patchouli is the oil of, um, I think it's the oil of, let me see, I'm looking it up in the, <laughs> I'm looking at, oh, it's the oil of physicality. Um, and then grapefruit is the oil of honoring the body. And then cypress is the oil of motion and flow. So you could put these oils into a roller bottle. I would probably put like 20 patchouli, 10 grapefruit, and 10 cypress in a roller bottle and fill the rest up with fractionated coconut oil. And you could put this on your sacral chakra right under your belly button. And that's a really great place to um, help unleash any, you know, um, creativity that's feeling stuck. Dancing is a great way to move all that through. Any sort of connecting. So it could be connecting to spirit. It could be connecting to friends and family. Um, it, could, it could be connecting in a, an intimate way with your partner. Um, connecting is really important to keep in mind when, when it's easy to feel isolated right now. Jasmine is the oil of sexual purity and balance. Um, and marjoram is the oil of connection. So I love the smell of marjoram. It's one of those oils where you're like, what? What is that thing? Um, but I am obsessed with the smell. Um, and I really do feel like whatever it is that you're needing emotional support around, you're typically going to love the smell of that oil. And conversely, if you hate the smell of an oil, you often need that oil real badly, because, but there's a part of your system that's a little resistant to shifting it. Um, so if you hate the smell of an oil, don't force it on yourself. You don't need to suffer, but you might want to put like one drop of that oil in combination with a bunch of oils that you love. I used to do this with frankincense because I hated the smell of frankincense, but I knew I needed it. It's the oil of truth. And at the time that I started using frankincense, I was not living my truth at all. I was in a job that did not serve me. I was very unhappy in a relationship. Um, and so I didn't want to use frankincense. I was totally repelled by it, but I really needed it. So I started combining it with oils that I loved, like, you know, it's in balance. I was combining it with um, elevation. And over time, I started to fall in love with it. So that's a way you can kind of trick your subconscious. <laughs> um, Acts of kindness, um, giving people compliments, just sharing kind thoughts, rose and geranium, those are heart openers. And then cleansing energetically, doing an actual cleanse or you know, doing an energetic cleanse, cutting, cutting energetic cords or hooks from your system, using cilantro, black pepper, and copaiba. Um, copaiba is sort of like CBD, but it doesn't leave a dirty footprint on the neurological system. So um, I prefer using it to CBD, but it's the oil of unveiling. Um, so it helps to connect with our past and um, it unveils the deeper meaning and messages showing up in one's life. So if you're feeling really confused by everything that's happening in the world right now, copaiba is a wonderful oil to use internally or you can use it topically and you can even diffuse it. And then you want to rejuvenate your system. You know, doing all of this can be really draining because you are shifting and transmuting energy in your body. So you can rejuvenate your cells using DDR prime and you can rejuvenate your adrenals using basil, the oil of renewal. Um, so, you know, feel free to pick one or two of these. The brain doesn't like too much dramatic change. So you can try adding in one or two things a week until you start having more of a self-care practice that you love. Um, and you know, adding in different oils into your, into your monthly orders. If you don't already have a doTERRA account and you would like to explore the possibility of getting one, please reach out to me. I can help you get a 25% discount. And then there are some um, ways to get free oils this month. Um, and then I guide you through the process of using your oils. I am an essential, a certified essential oil specialist and a health coach. So I'd be happy to help you create a daily plan that works for you based on your health concerns and your health goals. So just email me, amanda at realurbanwellness.com, amanda at realurbanwellness.com. Um, and I'd have to be happy to support you. Um, you can also text me. 
I'm going to give you my number. Hey, 917-687-5255. 917-687-5255. Only text me sweet nothings. Um, and yes, so um, the emotions book, again, I would recommend having that on hand. There's also a book called the Modern Essentials book. Um, and that goes more into the science and the history of oils. So if you're a science nerd like me and you need more detail, I would highly recommend that book as well. And we are complete. So thank you for joining this class today. If you have any lingering questions, please reach out and contact me. I'm happy to support you. Um, if you are already a member and you're in the Essential Alchemist fake Facebook group, please know you can always post questions in there because other people would probably benefit. I'm sure if you have the question, other people have questions. So always feel free to post in that group. As a member, you should have free access. Uh, or as a doTERRA member, you should have free access. If you don't use Facebook, I totally get it. Um, I don't want you to feel left out so I can add you to my newsletter list. And I often do lots of education. I only send out emails once or twice a month, but you're not on my list. Uh, again, email me, amanda at realurbanwellness.com, and I can add you to that list. I do giveaways and I send videos and uh, class notifications. So that's a, that's a great way to stay connected. So if there's anything else I can do to support you, please let me know. And I send you lots of love and joy in your day today. Take care.